Howdy and welcome back to Celebrating Vintage Model Kits. Today we're going to look at a 1957-58 Ravel catalog. This is something that you would get from <clears throat> sending in 10 cents in, a, in, a, in one of the little slips that was inside of the kit. Uh, any Ravel kit and uh, you could get this catalog and start dreaming away of what your next uh, build would be. And so it's in pretty good shape. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, tearing at the bottom, uh, a little bit of cracking on the spine, but overall, for you know, an over 50, what, 60 year old, 70, 70 year old uh, uh, catalog, this is pretty nice. So, on the cover here, you've got a sample of the different types of kits that they that are available. You got dad and, and a son enjoying it and little sis looking on like, oh man, I wish I was a boy. I could build models too. So you got ships and aircraft, tanks, cars, uh, the whole whole range of stuff that Ravel made. So let's take a look at what we got inside. So at the beginning, we got a checklist of all the kits that were available at the time. And uh, every one of them is featured in this catalog, which is kind of cool. Uh, here we've got the Ravel, um, uh, it's a special kind of display, Global Mobile, Global Mobile that uh, they're promoting here. So again, you've got, you know, Johnny here, you know, with his dad, who's an Air Force uh, sergeant and uh, building kits with him. And uh, so in reading this, it looks like this was made out of wrought iron. And you can either put it on a on a tabletop or you could suspend it. Did come with uh, one of the stands to go put the aircraft in the middle, and all these other ones would attach around the outside of these rings. Um, they did give you some sort of nylon cord to be able to suspend it. And uh, I think you also got a, a little sample tube of glue. In the background, you got some of their other kits, you know, uh, being displayed there, and the F one hundred Super Saber is what. Uh, Johnny's just about ready to finish up here. So kind of cool. So your first uh, few pages here are for Air Force and Navy fighters for your collection. And uh, they keep emphasizing this, the, the stand. Uh, the Ravel stand was pretty cool. And they're talking about some improvements made to this stand. But the Ravel stand, you know, their globe stand, was really neat. Um, you know, really allowed for a lot of displayability of, of your completed model and so you've got uh some of their early kits uh the h210 this one here the starfire was actually ravel's first uh, uh aircraft kit that they produced so seeing it here is actually kind of cool um and then here's a couple of the others from that first early series the cougar the skyrocket the cutlass uh, Thunderstreak, and then the 220 series uh, was a little bit later, so Scorpion, Air Cobra, Voodoos. Let's see, as far as our channel is concerned, we have seen, uh, as far as a kit review, we've seen this one here, the Delta Dagger. So that's the fighter series. And you got some more fighters. X3, I built this one when I was a kid. Actually won a contest with that one. Uh, Crusader, Starfighter, their bombers. So these bombers have been reissued by Atlantis, so these are pretty easy to get. Same thing with these over here, the B-24, the B-25. Uh, those are also Atlanta reissues, using the same artwork, actually, even. Which is kind of cool. And you can see on each one of these pages, it keeps talking, they're showing uh, this uh, mobile as well. Got some more bombers, Seamaster, and helicopters. We've done this H-19 down here. This is one I want to see if I can get, this Piaski. I think that's kind of a cool looking helicopter. Some transports, the trade win. I just thought this uh, box art was pretty cool with the C-130 with the wing coming out over your head. And then the DC-7, the two versions of it, you know, an American Airlines and then United. The United one came with the full airport set. 
I think Mike Machat reviewed this one, showing all the different little extra parts that came with it, even with the little, little red carpet and the photographer taking the pictures. Super G Connie. Now we get into their ships. Now you got Grandpa helping with the sailing ship. And in the background, some of their kits there. And they were really emphasizing that they're showing you, you know, the current Navy's, you know, uh, fleet. So you got the battleship, the big Mo, torpedo boats. Really, that's more of a World War II. Destroyer, the Sullivans, Baltimore-class cruiser. Your FDR carrier, which is one of the CVAs, the beginning, uh, the attack aircraft carriers with the uh, Midway and uh, Coral Sea and then the FDR. First nuclear submarine, the Nautilus. Uh, New Jersey, which is probably just uh, new, new decals on that. The Haven Hospital ship, they reissued this a couple of times with different uh, names on it. Assault Transport. And then you got a guided missile cruiser and the new Forrestal. This was brand new as well, too. The angled flight deck, a couple of Coast Guard ships, and a Mississippi Riverboat. The other thing you'll see that's on all these is scaled from official blueprints. Something that showed up on all their boxes at the time. And you got some maritime fleet, a Chris Craft, tugboat, USS United States freighter and a tanker then historic sailing ships santa maria flying cloud frigate constitution bounty um, they did have this this pre-made uh, rigging which would help with uh, getting this these put together faster so some of these side things you'd still have to have individual pieces for for the big lines but uh, uh they did try to uh um you know, speed things up. Um, they talk about contoured plastic sails. So these were vacuum-formed sails that would come inside these kits. Uh, that made it uh, a little quicker. Then your Army Combat Collection. And here you got them setting up a little diorama. They're going to take some pictures of it. Make their own little Battle of the Bulge, I guess. Uh, you notice a lot of these, they do not mention scale. They do sh they do give you sizes, dimensions, but they don't mention scale on a lot of this stuff. Um, and that's because at this time, majority of it was just box scale. Uh, but I believe all these armor kits were were scaled together, uh, sometimes being listed as 140th scale, but I have heard that it actually does scale out to 135th. Um, but this series you know, went on forever. And uh, I think it's even still available for issue. The, Sh the Sherman Tank, Jeep and Trailer, Fighting Guys, Armored Car, and your big old Long Tom. Then you've got uh, Cars. And this is uh, kind of your 56, 57, 58 era Cars. They're being shown here, and I think these were 132nd scale-ish on these guys. And then here they're talking about larger 25th scale. Uh, this is the uh, infamous uh, Lincoln Futura car, which uh, this turned into the Batmobile. Uh, from what I've heard is a lot of these uh, 25th scale Ravel kits uh, uh, got converted into Batmobiles by, by guys who uh, wanted to make one since there really wasn't a Batmobile available on a larger scale like this for quite a number of years. This I thought was kind of a cool looking car, this Pontiac Club de Mer. Looks like a, like a torpedo. Almost kind of looks like the, uh, uh, the, the, the drop tank uh, racers that were made in the 50s, you know, using P-38 drop tanks to uh, create a little little runabout car. Got a linear Cadillac and a Ford Country Squire. Then you had uh, these Speedy Sportsters and Highway Pioneers. These Highway Pioneers are some of the earliest kits that uh, Ravel produced, um, and they, they they kept them in their line for quite a long time. These are actually the very first kits they made uh, were 
were this part of this series. Then they, you know, moved up from the Pioneers into some of the 50s sports cars. A couple of uh, older ones got added. Then you had your trucking series. Fortunately, I'm not familiar with the scaling on this stuff, but I, you're going by the sizes, what they're listing here. These are probably, again, 30-second scale or smaller. And uh, Ravel did make uh, plastic uh, antique guns. And here we have the fabled, storied, highly desired gift sets. So they, they change the gift sets each year. And uh, this, this year they've got uh, the Supersonic Jet Fighter series, which included a, looks like a Crusader, a Tiger, and an F-104 Starfighter. Get your guided missile fleet. And uh, there's the air power set, which included a uh, grouping of some of the early kits, the Voodoo, Scorpion, Intruder, Delta Dagger, and Super Saber. And this one's kind of neat, the Airborne Marine gift set, which included a Skyhawk and uh, the Marine version of the H-19, which was the HRS. And then finally, the Army Combat gift set, which includes uh, everything that they produced um, in the uh, that, that Ground Armored series. And then finally, in the last section here, we've got Walt Disney's Perry the Squirrel. I think this is a picture of the kit. And uh, you get Sally here. This is the kit that Sally gets to build as Perry the Squirrel. And try to feed it. Yeah, I'm not so sure uh, it's going to be successful. This is kind of cool too. Ravel, most of the, the makers uh, had their own uh, glues and paint sets and stuff like that to help build. And Ravel, of course, had theirs, so that's what one of their tube cement uh, tubes looked like. This was a paint scent they had that included a small tube of glue. You can see a brush sitting across here and uh, some pretty basic paints, but it uh, would be kind of a neat little, little box to find one day. Then on the back cover, we've got... Uh, some information about their HO Railroad series that they were producing at the same time. Uh, there was a separate catalog for their HO trains you could send in for. And uh, showing a couple of their trains here. So that's that's our Revell 1957-58 catalog. Uh, if if you like this, let me know. Uh, I've got a few other vintage catalogs that I can review with you guys just thought i'd try something a little different see if uh uh if this uh you know, stimulated any nostalgia i know when i was a kid in the 70s i'd gotten some some catalogs uh at uh, at a mac show and i just spent hours pouring over them you know i had my little you know ballpoint pen i'd circle you know which kits i wanted and different colors for how bad i wanted it and and then over time, you know, some kits would drop off from, from my selection and new ones would get added. But a lot of it, you know, was really dependent more on the box art. Uh, if, if the box art looked cool, you know, I wanted that kit. And it just showed to me how, how powerful good box art is. And so that's it for today. Uh, you know, let's, let's know about your experience with catalogs. Hey, you know, did, did you enjoy them? Did you save them? Did you toss them? You, do you still have any? You know, so let us know in the comments section about it. And uh, also, another reminder, if you got any uh, uh, vintage built kits that you want to send uh, uh, pictures in, uh, we're still putting together the next uh, viewer build video. So definitely send, uh, send those in. The uh, email is in the uh, channel description. So send those in if you got them. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great rest of your day.